Mike Kelsey, David Platt's co-pastor, says he's scared to run in his neighborhood. Let's take a listen. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I think it's important to understand, like, I, I've been super blessed because a lot of the kind of horrific stories that you hear, I honestly haven't experienced. And part of that is because, yeah, I'm a black man, but I'm a certain kind of black man. Mm. I'm a black man who, uh, who thankfully uh, was able, my, my parents were kind of able to, put, you know, put their money together and were able to be blessed. And we have not ever been uh, wealthy by any stretch of the imagination. We started out, you know, poor, but, uh, but eventually by the time I was in middle school, high school, you know what I mean? We were able to be in the suburbs in a, you know, a decent neighborhood, you know, I'm clean cut, I'm light skinned with light eyes, you know, I'm, uh, and so uh, there are certain privileges that I've been able to enjoy because I'm not, you know, when, when I hang out with my friends, we on our bikes in the suburbs. Mm. We're not we're not hanging outside on the block. Mm. And I'm not talking about selling drugs. I'm just talking about being outside in right. a community that's saturated by, uh, you know, by heavy police presence. And so right. I just need to acknowledge that. Um, but even as uh, uh, a black man, what I shared on Twitter was one time in the neighborhood I'm in right now. And it's a great neighborhood. Y'all can probably hear birds chirping and, you know, all kind of stuff. Um, and this is my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But I was outside with my kids and um, uh, my son asked, uh, asked basically was like, Dad, I want to see how fast you can run. Mm -hmm. And asked me to run to the end of the block and back. And I had a hoodie on. It was a little chilly. And I had the hood pulled on because it had started to drizzle. And when he asked me to, to run... I was surprised by the emotion I immediately felt mm -hmm. and it was nervousness. Mm -hmm. And I, and in that split second and just like trying to evaluate what in the world is that I realized I felt it's probably not, we're still relatively new in this neighborhood. It's probably not wise for me as a black man with a hoodie on and my hood pulled on mm -hmm. to be seen sprinting down the street. Mm -hmm. um, they may not see my kids, mm -hmm. they may not whatever. And, and then quite frankly, you know, the, the consequences of, of their suspicion are out of my hands. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was grieved in that moment because this is happening in a split second. And I can't, right. I, I'm not, I don't want to explain that to my six year old son right now right. in this moment. Now, keep in mind, this is the, this is the same guy that said a few weeks ago, in another video that we put up that <clears throat> he said he had a difficult time not torching all white people. Um, you know, part of me wants to feel sorry for him. It, it really does. It, he's obviously a victim here, but he's not a victim of white supremacy at all. Mike Kelsey is a victim of critical race theory. Mike Kelsey has been conditioned to believe that white people are out to get him. Now, you, you saw earlier in this interview here, uh, they were talking about um, Ahmad Arbery and the incident that happened there. And um, Kelsey said that, you know, his one of his immediate feelings from that was outrage. A and maybe that's maybe that's rightfully so. Um, anytime the life of an innocent human being that's made in the image of God is taken all peace-loving human beings, especially Bible-believing Christians, should feel outrage about that. Okay. The problem here is that his immediate mindset when something like this happens is that it goes to racism. Um, there's no evidence that in any of these cases that 
racism was the motivating factor in, in, in any of these killings of Ahmad Arbery, um, George Floyd, any of them that you named over the, over the last few years. Does racism exist? Yes. Does racism against white people exist? Yes, it does. I've experienced it. I, I think everybody in America has experienced racism towards them in some way or another at some point in their life unless they live in an excluded area where there's nobody out there except people that look like them. At some point in your life, you're going to experience somebody that dislikes you because of the color of your skin. That's life. Not a good thing. We should speak out against it. But Mike Kelsey says he is afraid to run in his neighborhood, a predominantly white neighborhood, nice neighborhood, because he's black. Now think about that. There is no rational, statistical reason for him to feel that way. When you look at the statistics, the statistics, the objective truth, the facts do not support the idea that it's dangerous for a black man to run in a white neighborhood, any more so than a white man running in a black neighborhood. In fact, the statistics would actually show that it's far more dangerous for a white man to go running down the, the sidewalk in a black neighborhood than the other way around. But that doesn't matter. See, this is the fruit of critical race theory. This is the fruit of the media narrative out there that's causing this division between different ethnicities in America. There is no reason at all for Mike Kelsey to be afraid to run in his neighborhood does not matter. Look, I live in a predominantly white neighborhood. There are some black people that live in our neighborhood. There are some black people that visit our neighborhood. Not me or none of the neighbors that I know would look at a black man running down the, the street in our neighborhood with any kind of suspicion. None. Not one bit. So what I want to say to Mike Kelsey is, bro, <laughs> you really got to move on, man. You got to, you got to be objective here. You got to put some rational thinking behind your reasoning. If this is something that you are really concerned about, you really it, it, like if you actually live in this kind of fear of white people, you really, really, really ought to seek counseling, professional help. I, I really am. I, I really do feel bad that so many black people in America are they, they have these feelings they really do they have these feelings and it's really sad and we really we, it, it really does need to be dealt with but we can't deal with it by legitimizing something that's just illegitimate it has to be dealt with with the truth the most loving thing that you can if you're a white person in Mike Kelsey's church that's David Platt's McLean Bible Church if you're a white person in that church you cannot legitimize this with your pastor Mike Kelsey you could feel you could feel sympathy that he's dealing with these issues 
and you can offer prayer and support in a biblical way to help bring him to a state of rational reasoning on this. But you cannot, you cannot, under any circumstances, legitimize irrational behavior. That's not biblical, that's not godly, and it's not helpful. 